Thank you, Madam Chair, and thank you all for being here today. Despite our differences, which are many, Russia and the United States both want to prevent the spread of nuclear weapons. And we've had some real success on that front in the last 30 years. After the fall of the Soviet Union, we worked together to remove nuclear material from Central and Eastern Europe. And over time, we have downblended over 500 tons of highly enriched uranium from Soviet-era nuclear weapons. But that's changed. Uh, in 2014, the Russians terminated much of our bilateral nuclear security cooperation. In 2016, they refused to attend the 2016 Nuclear Security Summit. And later in 2016, they pulled out of a 16-year-old agreement to destroy 34 tons of plutonium, which is enough to make about 17,000 nuclear weapons. So, General Klotz, in light of shrinking U.S.-Russian cooperation, what is NNSA's strategy to ensure that Russia's large nuclear complex and stockpiles of nuclear material remain secure? What's, what's the plan now? I think you've, uh, Senator, you've uh, laid it out very well, the history of this with the, the Nunn-Luger and the other work that DOE did separate from uh, Nunn-Luger. I happen to have been serving in Moscow uh, from 1999 to 2001 in our embassy there and saw firsthand uh, the work that was being done by both the Department of Defense, Department of Energy uh, in helping secure uh, uh, Russian uh, nuclear facilities uh, doing work to uh, get control of all the materials there. Uh, and that was uh, very, very productive work. We established a lot of good working relationships at the technical level, scientist to scientist, engineer to engineer. Um, but it did come to a, it did come to a halt, and it came to a halt, I think, for two, uh, for two reasons. One, um, the Russians felt uh, that uh, they, given the turnaround in their economic situation, that they no longer needed to be in a donor recipient relationship. Uh, as far as aid uh, to help secure their nuclear uh, facilities. Um, and then, of course, there was the, uh, the, uh, all the differences in our relationship that have developed as a result of the invasion of Crimea, annexation Crimea, and so on. So um, uh, uh, the way in which we continue to cooperate is uh, we are not doing work uh, inside uh, Russia other than cleaning up uh, a couple of contracts that had already been uh, in place. Uh, we are prohibited uh, by uh, statute uh, from uh, entering into any new uh, contracts uh, with Russia, assuming they'd even want to at this stage, which they don't. Uh, and uh, so we're left with uh, working with the Russians, and we continue to work with the Russians on uh, what we would refer to as third-party efforts. For mm -hmm. instance, repatriating uh, Russian origin fuel from other countries uh, back to, uh, to Russia. We've just recently done that with uh, 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 Russian origin, highly enriched uranium in Kazakhstan. Uh, so we're looking for opportunities to, to, to do that. I would suggest if there ever is a change in our relationship uh, at the higher uh, political level, uh, it strikes us as this is a natural place um, for uh, cooperation to, uh, to develop, resume and develop, because what we are talking about, again, as I said earlier, scientist to scientist, technician to technician, right. largely divorced from uh, the larger, higher policy yeah. issues. That's, that's, that's very worrisome, though, where we stand right now. Let me ask you another part of this. You know, since the 1990s, the U.S. has spent billions of dollars to build nuclear infrastructure on Russian territory for things like training centers and sensors and nuclear safeguard and other technology. And now that Russia is not cooperating in these areas that we talk about, how is NNSA verifying that Russia is maintaining this infrastructure? And how do we make sure that this investment is not wasted? Uh, that's a very good question, and, and I, I probably will need to get back to you on the details. Okay. Uh, when we were actively engaged uh, in cooperation with Russia on nuclear security within Russian borders, uh, our people traveled there quite extensively uh, to do the same sort of oversight we do here in the United States uh, with our laboratories and production facilities to make sure 
uh, that the uh, contracts uh, and the assistance we were providing was being used for the purpose for which it was uh, uh, destined. Yeah. It, you know, the way I keep looking at this, there's, we have a lot of problems, obviously, with Russia, and we need a very strong response to their interference in Ukraine, what they're doing in Syria, the attack on democratic electoral systems uh, here in the United States and around the globe. But we don't have to agree on everything to agree that nuclear proliferation is bad and that we want to work together to stop it. So I appreciate your efforts on this. If I can, in my remaining time, I have one other question I want to ask you about. Uh, among your other responsibilities, General Klotz, you also oversee some of the world's most powerful supercomputers, including the three national ones here, Los Alamos and Sandia and Lawrence Livermore. We use these powerful supercomputers for models and simulations, obviously for our nuclear weapons stockpile, but we also use them to study, you know, for physics research and climate change and biological systems and weather forecasting. They're, they're important for lots of things. And this has always been an area of national excellence for the United States. In recent years, however, China seems to be outpacing us. Currently, China has the number one and number two most powerful supercomputers in the world. So General Klotz, in the little time I have left, can I just ask you to say something about is the United States losing ground in supercomputing? And if so, should we be concerned about that? Um, Senator, I think we should be concerned about it, but not just to you know have the fastest, best computer, uh, although I'm a very competitive person, so Good. That, that appeals mm -hmm. to me. Uh, but uh, we, need to, we need to develop computing capabilities in order to meet the requirements we have to do the modeling and simulation that you talk about to maintain a stockpile that's safe, secure, and effective. Um, if you'll indulge me for just a minute, I realize time's running out, indulge me just for a minute. The advances in high-performance computing uh, in the United States uh, were pioneered by the Atomic Energy Commission, the Manhattan Project and the Atomic Energy Commission, working with academic institutions and industry across the United States, because we've always had this demand for the ability to process large amounts of data. Uh, and we continue to, uh, to advance the frontiers. We're putting, we just put in a new computer at Los Alamos Trinity. Next year, we'll put in a new computing platform at Los Alamos, I mean, at, uh, Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory called Sierra. And we are jointly embarked upon uh, what we refer to as an exascale computing initiative with DOE's uh, Office of Science uh, to get us to the level of uh, exascale, which is 10 to the 18th quintillion uh, uh, flops of uh, of capability to do sort of the 3D high, uh, high fidelity simulations we need to do in the future. So in, um, in NSA alone, we have basically, uh, you know, last year um, in the omnibus, we had $95 million going to uh, develop the, the, the process. Uh, and uh, we are, we're asking for 158 million in uh, the next. So that shows you, I think, the, uh, the commitment of the Department of Energy, the commitment of NNSA uh, to uh, advance um, uh, our capabilities in a particular area. This money is not going to buy the platform. Industry will buy the platform. We have to make sure that whatever industry develops, uh, we will be able to run the kind of codes uh, that we need to on the architecture they have, whether it's for the weapons program or the other lines of research, uh, weather, uh, and, uh, and biological that uh, you uh, rightly pointed to. Thank you very much. You know, I, I'm glad to hear that, you know, this is very much a priority for you. I'm a strong supporter of investments in this area. They will pay dividends for the future, not only for our nuclear enterprise, but for all of our scientific research. So... Please count on me as an ally on this. Thank you, Senator. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair.